My name is Laura Lance, and I'm a funambulist, which means that I walk and balance on ropes. Wobbling is normal is a balancing tip that I find meaningful on many different levels, and this talk is about finding, uh, applying strategies for physical balance to life. I started off with slacklining, which is kind of like tightrope walking, but instead of walking on a rope, you're balancing on a narrow strip of elastic webbing that stretches and bounces and moves underneath you. And this means that you have to balance on it in a different way. This is what makes slacklining like life. When most people think of balance, they think of static balance, where you find a balanced position and you hold it. And life isn't like that. You have to be constantly adjusting to shifting situations, which is what slackliners do. It doesn't come easily. This is my friend Lauren. Uh, she's an experienced slackliner, but you can see how much the slackline moves underneath her. And for first-time slackliners, this wobbling can be so intense that you can't even step up off the ground. There's three sources of wobbling. Two of them you can't do anything about. The wind's going to blow, the earth's going to shift, you have air and blood and food moving around inside of you. But the thing that you can do is retrain your instinctive reactions to wobbling. And if you do this, you'll wobble a lot less. First time slackliners tend to think that they have to keep their foot completely still. So when it drifts a little bit, they overcorrect and they overcorrect. And these overcorrections become increasingly large until there's a wobbling that feels like an outside force even though they're expending a lot of energy to make a lot of this motion. Ouija boards work in a similar way. It's people's little, uh, un, little, little random movements uh, synchronized by their subconscious, but it feels like an outside force and it's a very compelling illusion. You see this in life also. There's all sorts of forces outside of our control, internal and external, that create chaos for us, but our reactions to these forces can make things much more difficult. You may wonder, why do I have natural instincts that make things worse? And the reason is that most people's instincts have developed to deal with more static situations. So these instincts have a purpose, they're good and they're useful, they just don't serve you well when it comes to dynamic situations. So for example, a new slackliner uh, will generally tense up and even hold their breath. And on solid ground, this makes a lot of sense. It helps you to minimize your body's motion and find your balance again. But on the slack line, you'll run out of breath before you ever get solid balance this way. Similarly, in life, when things feel out of control, uh, there can be a similar tendency to go kind of rigid and uh, fixate on what's worked in the past, become less expressive and less receptive to outside input, and think that you can, regain, uh, you can reconnect and relax once you've regained control. But when the situation is dynamically changing, this impulse will limit your ability to make the necessary adjustments to the changes that are taking place. As a slackliner, you really want to bend your knees and breathe. In life, you really want to remain flexible and open. And overriding your natural impulses is a difficult thing to do, but that's what allows you to develop these new instincts that will serve you better in dynamic situations. It's a process that takes time and experimentation. Oh, for me, yes. The, uh, for me, there was a definite turning point. Many of my early slacklining strategies focused on minimizing the motion of the line, but I had a paradigm shift that made everything easier when I started to pay more attention to my center of gravity. I got a feel for where it was and how I could move it around and how I could move the rest of my body to better support it. And I found that that made it so that I could stop worrying so much about the movement of the line. It's a little counterintuitive but your center of gravity and your foot can move independently of each other. So your foot can move around quite a lot while your center of gravity remains fairly stable. I think that this can be applied to life as well. So there's all of these, all of these sources of, of uh, upheaval and uncertainty, but that doesn't correlate to the amount of drama and turmoil that you experience in your life. Some people seem to be able to move through life and deal with its craziness with a certain kind of grace. And looking at slackliners, I think that this is something that anyone can learn. So I focused on what is, it, what is your center of gravity in life? Where can you put your attention that will enable you to better uh, navigate dynamic situations? And I think the answer is that your center of gravity is who you are. There are certain central characteristics of yourself, like how you learn, how you relate to other people, where you get your energy from, and these are things that you don't choose and you might not even know about, but you can discover them through movement and through experimentation. And 
if you are able to go on this process and discover and support and accept these aspects of yourself, you'll be able to move through life with less wobbling and more freedom. Thank you.